Hi, I'm Melissa, and today we're going to use servo motor together with the potentiometer to let other people know what mood we're in. Open your book to page 62. The type of a servo motor that we have in the starter kit is a micro servo that can rotate 180 degrees, which is a half of a revolution. We decide which angle we want the servo shaft to go to and control the position of the shaft by sending the right signals to a control circuit inside the motor. A pulse width modulation signal is used to tell where to rotate. However, today in our sketch we don't use analog write with PWM signals, like we did in the previous project with RGB LED. This because in this project we will use a pre-written library to help us to control the servo. I will tell you more about it when we go through the code. Together with the servo, we will use a potentiometer to tell the board how to direct the servo. The potentiometer is a variable resistor and we use a shaft to modify its resistance. Lastly, we will use capacitors to make sure we don't get any big voltage changes when using the servo. You can read more about the capacitors on the page 65. Now let's build our circuit. First make sure that your board is not connected to the computer. As you can see, I have connected the power and ground here already. Both potentiometer and servo need three wires, one for power, one for ground and one for signal. Potentiometer comes in two pieces, attached a knob to the base. As you can see, it has three legs. The one that is alone on the other side needs to be connected to an analog pin. You need a long wire to connect this one all the way to the analog pin. I'm going to use the analog pin zero because we have that in the code. I connect one leg to ground and make sure there's still a uh, hole between the wire and potentiometer. We need that for the capacitor later. And then one to power. Then I take the servo. I have already placed the shaft on top of the servo. And as we can see, we there's a three wires coming out from the servo. Black for ground, red for power, and white for signal. Pay attention to which end your wire goes to. Here you can see that the power is in the middle, but actually here, it's on the right. We need to know this when we connect our servo to the breadboard. As you can see, the servo has a female end here, so we need to take headers to be able to connect it to the breadboard. You have these in your starter kit. You can also use small wires. So I take the one that has a bit shorter legs and put it here. And then connect this one by pressing it. And sometimes uh, this black thing in, in the header can move. So you can really press it so it sticks there. Now we'll connect it. So like we can see, I have the signal in the middle, so the middle leg here goes to digital pin 9. Then I have ground here, so I will connect the row that has the ground. And same way as we have for the potentiometer, make sure that you have here holes between the wire and between the servo so we can fit the capacitor here. And then the red one to power. Then we also need to use capacitors. With them, we can smooth out any voltage changes that may occur. It is extremely important to check that you connect the capacitor the right way. Here you can see that there is a black stripe on the side. You can also see that that leg is shorter. That is cathode and goes to ground. I have the ground leg here. And then here, once again, I check, okay, here is the ground. It's a shorter leg. And I have the ground, the black wire on this side. Now that we're done, 
We can connect our board to the computer and upload the example code named Project 5 Servo Mood Indicator. Now you should be able to control the shaft by turning the potentiometer. Open your book to page 66 and let's take a look at the code together. Like I mentioned before, we use a library to help us to control the servo. Libraries are collections of codes that makes it easier for you to connect and use various components, such as servos and displays. In this project, we will use the servo library. You can find more information about libraries from the Arduino reference page. In the setup, we need to tell the Arduino what pin our servo is attached to. Check that you have connected your servo to digital pin 9, or modify the sketch to have the pin number you're using with your servo. Remember that with servos you need to use digital pins that have tilde next to the pin number. Potentiometer can send values between 0 and 1023, but our servo can only take values between 0 and 179. For that reason, we will use math function to scale the numbers. The scale number we get from math function gets stored to the variable called angle. In the math function, first we have the variable potval, which is the value we receive from the potentiometer and the number to be scaled. Then we have the minimum and maximum values we can receive from the potentiometer. And lastly, the minimum and maximum values we can send to the servo. The command write uses an angle between 0 and 180 as an input and tells the servo to rotate to that angle using the corresponding BWM. For example, if we would use write 45, the length of the pulse would be 1 milliseconds and the servo would rotate to the position of 45 degrees. After you have uploaded the code to your board, you can open your serial monitor to see the values received from the potentiometer. You can also see what is the scaled number, in this case, the angle sent to the servo. Turn to the page 69 of your project's book to find the instructions for making your own mute cue using paper or cardboard. In the previous project, we used a photo transistor to read light values. You can try to modify today's project by replacing the potentiometer with a photo transistor or a temperature sensor and design a paper base that shows, for example, what kind of weather is outside. When the photo transistor is sensing only a little light, the servo shaft will point to a part that tells us that it's cloudy at the moment. You can, of course, use your servo motor for all different kinds of projects, for example, creating a robotic arm or a gate opening mechanism. Visit our Arduino Project Hub to get more inspiration on what you can do with your servo motor. Next time, we will create music with our Arduino. Bye!